Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Clinton Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's the C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. Brian, I want to start with a boom. Boom. All right. Well, my friend, how are you doing? Doing well today. Doing very well. Well, I am excited because uh, we're going to be talking about what it takes to succeed as an entrepreneur. And uh, you are really one of America's most successful insurance agents. Can you explain, though, in third grade terms so that my mind and maybe other thrivers can grasp, when we say you're one of America's most successful insurance agents, can you maybe compare... Um, how big your insurance business is in comparison to maybe most other insurance in private agencies or independent agents? Well, I appreciate that, Clay, and I'm not sure who told you all that information, but um, <laughs> um, let's say we were one of the most successful in the country. Uh, the comparison would look like this. Um, in our 1,050 square foot building, we would probably be the size of potentially 10 to 12 other insurance agencies in Tulsa. Really? Yes, sir. So this guy, I mean, because there's, there's so many people who are insurance agents, but you really have a business that you've built. I mean, this is, you guys are like 10 times larger than the average insurance sure. agent. We, we don't think about the, the business as just being a little bitty business. Uh, we like to think about our office as being a 24-7 connection to our clients. So we're accessible at any time. Okay. So that's your kind of your niche. Yes. Now, I know that you're... Uh, ridiculously successful as an agent, but uh, where did you start, my friend? Tell me how you grew up. I started in a little town north of Tulsa by the name of Owasso, um, which is a thriving metropolis these days, but when I lived there, it was just a quaint little town. And I, I did the regular stuff. I went to high school. Um, after high school, I went to three or four different colleges to figure out what I was going to do. Um, my, my, uh, my life Came off the, the tracks a little bit, though, as a, as a younger guy. I was hit by a drunk driver um, when I was young, and it, it slowed down my path for athletics and, as well as my education. And so I, when I moved back home, I just started working at my local church um, with my youth group and trying to figure out what I was going to do. After that, I, I met a guy that was in the mortgage business, and he said, um, I'm still friends with him to this day. He actually works with me now. He said, you're a little bit young for the mortgage business. And just like lots of other people told me at the time, you're a little bit young or you probably can't do that. But he gave me an opportunity and I took the opportunity at, at age 24. Uh, four years later, I, I owned that mortgage company with, a few, with himself and a few additional guys. And we sold that later in 2009, but I got my real start in business uh, right there on the phone, selling mortgage loans uh, across the country. So you actually, your first real sales job, I mean, you weren't raised in like a sales Viking culture where every day your mom and dad <laughs> taught you sales and you ate sales for breakfast. I mean, you, you, your first job, 24, I mean, your first real sales job? Yeah. Well, my mom worked for 36 years in the boiler room, also known as Owasso Public Schools. Ooh. So Ooh. there wasn't a lot of sales teaching, but I, I will credit my mother with a lot of my personality. She, she's, she's got a great personality. Is so. your mother a honey badger? Yeah, she is. You know, I learned a lot from my mom. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but I thought when I was a teenager that everyone's mom had two to three jobs. Um, father wasn't necessarily around my, my whole child life and, and teenage life. And so my mom worked two to three jobs the whole way through so that my brother and I could do all the things that we did. And it wasn't until I was about 24 that I realized, you know what? Not everybody's mom works two to three jobs. Just mine did to yeah. make sure. So I get a lot of what I have from strength from, from my mother. Her, her personality is just like mine, very overbearing, sarcastic, and, and somewhat annoying. So. And that's why we love you, though. That's, what, ah. that, that's why he, you that's why are America's her. honey badger, and you deserve <laughs> another boom. Boom. Okay, here we go. Now, notable quotable, Brian. Uh, Reed Hoffman, that's the guy who co-founded LinkedIn, and he was a member of the PayPal Board of Directors and a very successful venture capitalist. 
He describes entrepreneurship as you jump off a cliff and you assemble an airplane on the way down. Uh, Brian, tell, tell us a story, uh, kind of a story time here. Tell us a story of when you first got bitten by this entrepreneurial bug. When did sure. you decide, I'm going to start my own business? You know what, Clay? I learned at a pretty young age that the path to your greatest success is probably going to run through your greatest fear. And at a young age, when you learn that, you almost become unstoppable if you want to be. So, you know, there, there's a million stories of when I was like, oh man, I think I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I don't think I realized that the entrepreneur thing till later. What I thought my whole life is that you get up, you do the things you do in the morning, you go to work, and you call people. And that's it. And if, if you kind of look at your day in sales or an entrepreneur, that's what you do. You get up, you do what you've got to do to get ready to leave the house, whatever that may be, and you go call people. And if you do that every single day, the results will be good because you can't track results. They're not guaranteed. You got to track effort. And if the effort's there, generally the results will follow. You just, you just said two things that are blowing my mind here. Uh, one <laughs> is you said the path to your greatest success is usually through your greatest fear. Sure. That is, that is profound. And you're also saying that you, can, you cannot track the results, you can just track like the, the activity that you're doing or the effort? Today, today in my own business, I don't sit down with my staff and say, you know what, here's the results and goals that you have. I wanna talk about what are you gonna do to get there? So I'm gonna track your effort and your activity we'll get to the results. The results are something that I can't guarantee, so why talk about results if we can't guarantee them? I can only guarantee an effort. I wanna hug you right now. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. I, I love this because this is 100% opposite of what I would say 95% of the, the kids I meet who've graduated from college and they're on like year four of looking for a job. Sure. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, the idea that like, well, I'm just focusing on the results, but that activity, that, 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 that effort you're putting forth is what you need to be focusing on. Cause you'll get, you'll ultimately get results, right? If you just, everything you want in your life is right outside your comfort zone. So what you have to do is realize that, you know, in colleges, they teach you that when you graduate, you're going to make lots of money. Oh yeah. Not accurate. Oh. So what you have to do is you've got to learn that things come with time and you can't just come out of college expecting a hundred thousand. That's the result. You've got to go out there and control the effort and activity and track it. The success will follow the effort. I kind of want to get a sarcastic shirt together that says college after you graduate, you'll get out and make a lot of money. Sure. Yeah. That's it, not right. It Signed equals a hundred K. It equals a hundred K always. <laughs> All right. Now, according to an article featured in September 12, 2013, that was written by this guy by the name of Eric Wagner. It was featured in Forbes called Five Reasons Eight Out of Ten Business Owners or Businesses Fail. He says that eight out of ten uh, entrepreneurs who start businesses fail within the first 18 months. What made you believe that you actually had what it takes to become a successful self-employed person? You know, nothing happened to make me believe that. And I, get, I argue a lot with people that there, there's a lot of natural ability that comes into successful entrepreneurs. It's, it's not all of it's teachable. I think some of it's learnable, but not all of it's teachable. And that's a, that's a thing that throws people off a ton. I, I don't think I ever woke up one day and said, I think I'm going to be good at this. What I learned is that culture is extremely important in my business. Culture is so important that I believe culture comes before strategy. Culture is the manager when the manager has gone. So, if you have a strategy and you're gone from your business, who's going to put the strategy in place? Well, well, nobody, unless you have phenomenal leaders that shouldn't be working for you. So, but if you have a culture and that culture is made more important than the actual strategy that you have in your business, when, when the leader, the manager is gone, culture will be the manager and people will do what they need to do. So that's how our business became successful is leaving such a culture with my people that even when I'm gone, they're doing the very same things as when I'm there. If I leave them with a strategy or a plan, they're human. They're gonna do some of it, but yeah. not all of it. Culture is the manager when the manager's gone. Yes, I sir. love that, I love that. You're, you're full of notable quotables, you're blowing my mind. 
I, I like to memorize the best 10 things I've ever said yeah. and then regurgitate them every time I talk. Well, I'm, I'm going to start crying <laughs> if, we, if you keep this up. So here, here's another notable quotable here. Uh, the legendary management expert and author Peter Drucker says, the best way to predict the future is to create it. What things have you done to intentionally design your current uh, level of success you're experiencing or, or to kind of design the effort needed to create this level of success you're experiencing there? It's a mindset. Tom Izzo says your next season starts right now. And if you guys have ever read a book or talked or heard a quote from Coach Tom Izzo, as soon as he wins the last game, the championship game, you, you would think it's time to celebrate. Well, Izzo doesn't go celebrate. Uh, Izzo is well known for hitting the phone, returning voicemails, night of or morning of the championship game the next day with recruits. And I think what I've learned from that is that the, the game is never really over. And you have to always be planning the next thing. You, you've always got to be doing the next thing. And if you can track your activity and effort, it all goes together. We, we're never looking for the result. We're always looking, like I said earlier, for the effort put into it. So as an entrepreneur, I'm always constantly preparing and planning. And then I'm making sure that I've got people around me to hold myself accountable to the never-ending game. This, this is unbelievable. Now, I want to I I ask you, just to, so for people who maybe don't know who Tom Izzo is, can sure. you clarify who Tom Izzo is just for the thrivers across sure, the yeah. planet? Tom Izzo is a college basketball coach. Okay. He's one of the most successful ones out there. I, I would mean, say so. This guy gets it done. Now, um, as far as, did you have a, a turning point in your career? Because I know you're saying, hey, I didn't really sit down and decide to have like an epiphany. But did you have a turning point where you realized, hey, I'm building a world-class business here? Is there any point where you started to see the success pile up a little bit? What's funny about that, Clay, is I don't know that, you know, like I said, I don't know if I ever woke up and said, I think I'm going to be an entrepreneur. But let me tell you what got me to think I need to be an entrepreneur. Is I'm in the mortgage business for four years at this time. And I wake up one day and I'm 28 years old. And I said, I have an expiration date. And I think, what in the world is that? And I begin, I sit down with my brother-in-law who's a partner of mine now and I say, we've got an expiration date. So yeah, I'm 28 years old. I, uh, let's say I'm the, the hot thing here at our company now. I, I can pick up the phone and make things happen. I have desire, passion, I'm unstoppable. But you know what? I'm gonna get a little bit older in a few years and when I do that, the next Brian Smith is going to come along and take my job. The next Brian Smith is going to come along and take all the things that I love. You know, people think money motivates entrepreneurs. It's a piece of it, but a true entrepreneur is motivated by winning. Uh, we like to see the score. And so if I'm getting older and I'm becoming irrelevant, that's actually more of an impact to me than the money loss. So I said, you know what, I've got to change that. How do I control that? Well, I've got to become the controller. And the way I did that, as I said, I'm going to buy this mortgage company and it's going to be mine. Then no one can come along and challenge my relevancy. Okay, now you said it's all about winning for entrepreneurs. It's a sure. big part of it. Um, do people who are not, I mean, because you built a culture now. So as you're building sure. this culture, do the people who are not focused on winning frustrate you? Or do you allow people that are not focused on winning to be a part of your team to build that culture? Sure. Like, how do you deal with that? I'm going to hurt some feelings here, but if you don't keep score, you're not an entrepreneur, period. Entrepreneurs keep score with everything. We want to know where we're at, what we're doing, how we track, what the production is of the team all the time. And if you don't do that, you're probably not going to be that good in sales and you may not want to open a business either. And if you're going to open the business anyway, against my better judgment, you need to get a partner that keeps score. Huge stuff here. Again, if you're watching this, uh, I, I just talked to a lady the other day. She's a thriver. And she was talking about how she has this product that she knows it just it, it can't miss. It is so awesome. She's talking about how these professional athletes have used this product, and it's so great. And it just, for some reason, for the last 10 years... It hasn't taken off. And I was, I was asking her, how, how, how often are you failing? How often are you mm -hmm. calling people? How often are you introducing retail stores to your product? And there was really kind of like a, well, two or three times this year. But you, you would say to that person, what? Just get on the phone and make a ridiculous amount of effort? The, the first thing I probably say to her is that I, I can teach you sales. I can teach you sales all day long. 
But what I can't teach you, Clay, is passion, desire, and drive. Those three things are actually going to outweigh your sales because if you're passionate, you have drive, and you're self-motivated, the desire is going to be there to do whatever it takes, be it phone calls, postcards, mail, uh, face-to-face contact, knock on doors, whatever it is you got to do. Everything I just named, I've done and would do again if I need to. The good thing about successful entrepreneurship is that as you get those, you can still do those things through other people. We were at a dinner that you were sponsoring, and here you are, one of the presenters. And I told my wife, like, this is how I know I love Brian Smith. We're there sitting at this formal dinner, (laughs) and I look, there's this plated meal, there's all this beautiful decor, there's centerpieces, and there is a picture of your face and a call to action about getting an insurance quote from Brian Smith and the State Farm agency right there. And then I look to my right, and another, and another, and I look around the room, and there's like 300 of them, and there you are passing them out. Yeah. It was awesome. That's, is that what you're talking about when you say passion, desire, drive? I mean, that's what you're talking about, is just the willingness to do that kind of stuff? Willingness to do whatever it takes. I don't think there's really that many bad ideas when you're starting out. You figure out later that maybe your return on investment's not so good with different things, but I think you've got to try things to see what doesn't work. If you're a young entrepreneur or even a tenured entrepreneur, but you're starting a new business with a new product, you don't know what won't work. So as long as it's budgeted and planned, you've got to try it. Now, Thomas Edison, the famous uh, American inventor who developed the uh, first practical electrical uh, light bulb, the uh, motion picture camera, recorded sound. Thrive would not be possible without this guy. I mean, this guy's Mm -hmm. unbelievable. And he says that genius, though, here's the guy who's a genius. He says that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Uh, My friend, how much of a factor do you believe that uh, a work ethic like that plays into creating success for any entrepreneur? Well, I'm always blown away when I go back and read about someone like Thomas Edison who made some 800 mistakes on just one invention. I love the the drive there, but I'll tell you, enemies of the best are usually the good. And someone like Thomas Edison realized that it wasn't good enough and continued and continued and continued to be the best. So when when you continue, that's part of the passion and drive that that it takes to run any type of a business. You are absolutely blowing my mind with your notable quotables. It's unbelievable. <laughs> the, uh, I, I just want to, I mean, as we're talking about what it takes to be, uh, 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 to succeed as an entrepreneur, um, you are an American honey badger, and I appreciate you coming on today and, and sharing with the thrivers out there. If there's anybody watching this right now who you're speaking directly to them over there in that camera, and, you're, and they're kind of going, do I have what it takes to succeed as an entrepreneur? If, if they're asking you that question, what would you say to them? You know, I would tell a person that was going to be an entrepreneur, here's the main thing. You've got to have mentors, and you've always got to be working on something that makes you worth imitating. A life worth imitating is what is going to drive an entrepreneur to be the very best. It's not going to be sales, and it's not going to be production. It's going to be their ability to replicate themselves through other people. Well, I'm going to start crying. This has been one of the most touching <laughs> Honey Badger infused episodes that I have ever been a part of. I absolutely love this, my friend, and thank you for being here. Can I end with a boom? Sure. Boom. Boom. JT, do you know what time it is? Um, four ten. It's <laughs> it's Tebow time in Tulsa, oh. Jerusalem, baby. Tim Tebow is coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma, June 27th and 28th. We've been doing business conferences here uh, since 2005. I've been hosting business conferences since 2005. What year were you born? Uh, 1995. Dude, I've been hosting business conferences since you were 10 years old, but I've never had to the two-time Heisman Award winning Tim Tebow come present. And a lot of people you know, have followed Tim Tebow's football career on the field. Uh, and off the field and off the field the guy's been just as successful as he has been on the field now the big question is jt how does he do it Mm, 
Well, they're going to have to come and find out because I don't know. Well, I'm just no. saying, Tip Tebow is going to teach us how he organizes his day, how he organizes his life, how he's proactive with his faith, his family, his finances. He's going to walk us through his mindset that he brings into the gym, into business. It is going to be a blasty blast in Tulsa, Jerusalem. Also, this is the first uh, Thrive Time show event that we've had where we're going to have a man who has built a $100 million net worth. Wow. He'll be presenting. Now, we've had a couple presenters that um, have had a billion dollar net worth mm. um, in some like real estate sort of things. Yeah. But this is the first time we've had a guy who's built a service business and he's built over a hundred million dollar net worth in the service business. It's the yacht driving, uh, multi-state living guru of franchising. Peter Taunton will be in the house. This is the founder of Snap Fitness, the guy behind Nine Round Boxing. He's going to be here in Tulsa, Jerusalem, Tulsa, Jerusalem, Oklahoma, June 27th and 28th. JT, why should everybody want to hear what Peter Totten has to say? Oh, because he's incredible. He's just a fountain of knowledge. He is awesome. He has uh, inspired me listening to him talk. And not only that, he also has, uh, he practices what he teaches. So he's a real teacher. He's not a fake teacher like business school teachers. So you got to come learn from him. Also, let me tell you this, folks. I don't want to get this wrong because if I get it wrong, um, someone's going to say, you screwed that up, buddy. So Michael <laughs> Levine, this is Michael Levine. He's going to be coming. You say, Who, who's Michael Levine? I, I don't want to get this wrong. This is the PR consultant of choice for Michael Jackson, wow. for Prince, wow. for Nike, for mm. Charlton Heston, for Nancy mm. Kerrigan, 34 Grammy Award winners, 43 New York Times bestselling authors he's represented, including pretty much everybody you know who's been a super celebrity. This is Michael Levine, a good friend of mine. He's going to come and talk to you about personal branding and the mindset needed to be super successful. The lineup will continue to grow. We have hit Christian recording artist Colton Dixon in the house. Now, people say, Colton Dixon's in the house? Yes, Colton Dixon's in the house. So if you like top 40 Christian music, Colton Dixon's going to be in the house performing. The lineup will continue to grow each and every day. We're going to add more and more speakers to this all-star lineup. But I encourage everybody out there today get those tickets today go to thrivetimeshow.com again that's thrivetimeshow.com and some people might be saying well how do i do it what do i do how does it work you just go to thrivetimeshow.com let's go there now we're feeling the flow we're going to thrive 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 thrivetimeshow.com again you just go to thrivetimeshow.com you click on the business conferences button and you click on the request tickets button right there um the way i do our conferences is we tell people it's 250 dollars to get a ticket yep or whatever price that you can afford and the reason why I do that is I grew up without money. Uh, JT, you're in the process of building a super successful company. Um, yep. Did you start out with a million dollars in the bank account? No, I did not. Nope, did not get any loans, nothing like that. Did not get an inheritance from parents or anything like that. I had to work for it, and I uh, am super grateful I came to a business conference. That's actually how I met you, met Peter Taunton. I met all these people. So if you're out there today and you want to come to our workshop, again, you just got to go to thrivetimeshow.com. You might say, well, when's it going to be? June 27th and 28th. And you might say, well, who's speaking? We already covered that. You might say, where's it going to be? It's going to be in Tulsa, Jerusalem, Oklahoma. So it says Tulsa, Jerusalem. Uh, it's, I'm really trying to rebrand Tulsa as Tulsa, Jerusalem, sort of like the Jerusalem of America. But if you go to, if you type in Thrive Time Show and Jinx, you can get a sneak peek or a look at our office facility. This is what it looks like. This is where you're headed. It's going to be a blasty blast. You can look inside, see the facility. We're going to have hundreds of entrepreneurs here. It is going to be packed. Now, for this particular event, folks, uh, the seating is always limited because my facility isn't a limitless um convention center you're coming to my actual home office and so it's going to be packed so when june 27th to 28th who you you're going to come who you I, I, i'm talking to you you can just get your tickets right now at thrivetimeshow.com and again you can name your price we tell people it's 250 dollars or whatever price you can afford and we do have some select vip tickets which gives you an access to meet some of the speakers and those sorts of things and those tickets are 500 dollars. it's a two-day interactive business workshop over 20 hours of business training we're going to give you a copy of my newest book the millionaire's guide to becoming sustainably rich you're going to leave with a workbook you're going to leave with everything you need to know to start and grow a super successful company it's practical it's actionable and it's tebow time right here in Tulsa, Jerusalem. Get those tickets today at thrivetimeshow.com. Again, that's thrivetimeshow.com. Hello, I'm Michael Levine, and I'm talking to you right now from the center of Hollywood, California, where I have represented over the last 35 years 58 Academy Award winners, 34 Grammy Award winners, 43 New York Times bestsellers. I've represented a lot of major stars, and I've worked with a lot of major companies.
things. And I think I've learned a few things about what makes them work and what makes them not work. Now, why would a man living in Hollywood, California, in the beautiful sunny weather of LA, come to Tulsa? Because last year I did it and it was damn exciting. Clay Clark has put together an exceptional uh, presentation, really life-changing. And I'm looking forward to seeing you then. I'm Michael Levine. I'll see you in Tulsa. James, did I tell you my good friend John Lee Dumas is also joining us at the in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show Business Workshop? That Tim Tebow and that uh, Michael Levine will be at. Have I told you this? You have not told me that. Oh, he's coming all the way from Puerto Rico. This is John Lee Dumas, the host of the Chart Topping EOFire.com podcast. He's absolutely a living legend. This guy started a podcast after uh, uh, wrapping up his service in the United States military. And he started recording this podcast daily in his home to the point where he started interviewing big time folks like Gary Vaynerchuk, like Tony Robbins. And he just kept interviewing bigger and bigger names, putting out shows day after day. And now he is the legendary host of the EO Fire podcast. And he's traveling all the way from Puerto Rico to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to attend the in-person June 27th and 28th Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshop if you're out there today folks you've ever wanted to grow a podcast a broadcast you want to get in you want to improve your marketing if you've ever wanted to improve your marketing your branding if you've ever wanted to increase your sales you want to come to the two-day interactive june 27th and 28th thrive time show business workshop featuring tim tebow michael levine john lee dumas and countless big time super successful entrepreneurs it's going to be life-changing get your tickets right now at thrivetimeshow.com james what website is that thrivetimeshow.com james one more time before enthusiasm thrivetimeshow.com Everything rides on tonight Even if I got three strikes I'ma go for it This moment we own it eh? I'm not to be played with Because it could get dangerous See these people I ride with This moment we own it Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying. And I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Robert Zellner and Associates, look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. 
you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you. I learned at the Academy in King's Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does, not what they say. Whoa. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Harvard Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Today I'm broadcasting from Phoenix, Arizona, not Scottsdale, Arizona. They're closed, but they're completely different worlds. And uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, definition of intelligence is if you agree with me, you're intelligent. And so this gentleman is very intelligent. I've done this show before also, but very seldom do you find somebody who lines up on all counts. And so Mr. Clay Clark, he's a friend of a good friend, Eric, Eric Trump. But we're also talking about money, bricks, and how screwed up the world can get in a few and a half hour. So Clay Clark is a very intelligent man. And there's so many ways we could take this thing. But I thought, uh, since you and Eric are close, Trump, what were you saying about what Trump can't, what Donald, who is my yeah. age, and I can say or cannot say. What, well, I have to, first of all, I have to honor you, sir. I want to show you what I did to one of your books here. There's all a right. guy by the name of Jeremy Thorne, who was my boss at the time. I was 19 years old, working at Faith Highway. I had a job at Applebee's, Target, and DirecTV. And he said, have you read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? And I said, no. And uh, my father, may he rest in peace, um, he didn't know these financial principles. So I started reading all of your books and uh, really devouring your books. And I went from being an employee to self-employed to the business owner to the investor. And I owe a lot of that to you. And I just wanted to take a moment to tell you thank you so much for allowing me to, to, to achieve success. And then I'll tell you all about Eric Trump. But I just want to tell you, thank you, sir, for changing my life. Well, not only that, Clay, you know, thank you, but you've become an influencer. You know, more than anything else, you've evolved into an influencer where your word has more and more power. So that's why I uh, congratulate you on becoming. Because as you know, there's a lot of fake influencers out there, too, or bad influencers. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad you and I agree so much. And thanks for reading my books. Yeah. That's, that's the greatest thrill for me today. Not a thrill, but recognition is when people, young men especially, come up and say, I read your book, changed my life. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I learned at the Academy in Kings Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does, not what they say. Whoa. Hey, I'm Ryan Wimpy. I'm originally from Tulsa, born and raised here. I went to a small private liberal arts college and got a degree in business. And I didn't learn anything like they're teaching here. I didn't learn linear workflows. I learned stuff that I'm not using and I haven't been using for the last nine years. So what they're teaching here is actually way better than what I got at business school. And I went what was actually ranked as a very good business school. The linear workflow, the linear workflow for us and getting everything out on paper and documented is really important. Um, like we have workflows that are kind of all over the place. So the having linear workflow and seeing that mapped out on multiple different boards uh, is pretty awesome. That's really helpful for me. The atmosphere here is awesome. I definitely just stared at the walls, figuring out how to make my facility look like this place. This place rocks. It's invigorating. The walls are super. Um, it's just very cool. The atmosphere is cool. The people are nice. Uh, it's a pretty cool place to be. Very good learning atmosphere. I literally want to model it and steal everything that's here at this facility and uh, basically create it just on our business side. Once I saw what they were doing, I knew I had to get here at the conference. This is probably the best conference or seminar I've ever been to in over 30 years of business. You're not bored. You're awake, alive the whole time. It's not pushy. They don't try to sell you a bunch of things. I was looking to learn how to just get control of my life, my schedule, and just get a control of the business. Planning your time, breaking it all down, making time for the, you know, the F6 in your life, and just really implementing it and sticking with the program. It's really lively. He's, they're pretty friendly, uh, helpful. 
and very welcoming. I attended a conference a couple months back and it was really the best business conference I've ever attended. At the workshop, I learned a lot about time management, um, really prioritizing what's the most important. The biggest takeaways are, you know, you want to take a step-by-step -step approach to your business. So whether it's marketing, you know, what are those three marketing tools that you want to use to human resources. Now, some of the most successful people and successful businesses in this town, their owners were here today because they wanted to know more from Clay and I found that to be kind of fascinating. The most valuable thing that I've learned is diligence. That businesses don't change overnight. It takes time and effort, and you gotta go through the ups and downs of getting it to where you wanna go. He actually gives you the roadmap out. I was stuck, didn't know what to do, and he gave me the roadmap out step by step. We've set up systems in the business that make my life much easier, allow me some time freedom. Here you can ask any question you want, they guarantee it'll be answered. This conference like motivates me and also give me a lot of knowledge and tools. It's up to you to do this. Um, everybody can do these things, they're, they're stuff that everybody knows, but if you don't do it, nobody else can do it for you. I can see the marketing working. And it, it's just an approach that makes sense. Probably the most notable thing is just the, the income increase that we've had. Everyone's super fun, it's super motivating. Uh, I've been here before, but I'm back again because it motivates me. Your competition's going to come eventually or try to pick up these tactics. So you better, you, if you don't, somebody else will. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine, and we just want to give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you, and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. See? Uh, nice, right? So this is my old van, and our old school marketing, and this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing, and this is our new team. We went from four to 14, and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past, and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman, so we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts, and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grossed 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. So we really just want to thank you, Clay, and thank you, Vanessa, for everything you've done, everything you've helped us with. We love you guys. If you decide to not attend the Thrive Time Workshop, you're missing out on a great opportunity. The atmosphere of Clay's office is very lively. You can feel the energy as soon as you walk through the door. And it really got me and my team very excited. If you decide not to come, you're missing out on an opportunity to grow your business. Bottom line. Love the environment. I love the way that Clay presents and teaches. It's a way that not only allows me to comprehend what's going on, but he explains it in a way to where it just makes sense. The SEO optimization, branding, marketing, I've learned more in the last two days than I have the entire four years of college. The most valuable thing that I've learned Marketing is key. Uh, marketing is everything. Making sure that you're branded accurately and clearly. How to grow a business using Google reviews and then just how to optimize our name through our website also. Helpful with uh, a lot of marketing, search engine optimization, um, uh, helping us really rank high in Google. The biggest thing I needed to learn was 
how to build my foundation, how to systemize everything and optimize everything, build my SEO. How to become more organized, uh, more efficient. How to make sure the business is really there to serve me as opposed to me constantly being there for the business. New ways of advertising my business as well as recruiting new employees. Group interviews, number one. Uh, before, we felt like we were held hostage by our employees. Group interviews has completely eliminated that because you're able to really find the people that would really be the best fit. Hands on how to hire people, how to deal with human resources, um, a lot about marketing, and overall just how to structure the business, how it works for me, and also then how that can translate into working better for my clients. The most valuable thing I've learned here is time management. I like the one hour of doing your business is real critical if I'm going to grow and change. Play really teaches you how to navigate through those things and not only find freedom but find your purpose in your business and find the purposes for all those other people that directly affect your business as well. Everybody. 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 Everyone. Everyone needs to attend the conference because you get an opportunity to see that it's real.